Nanticoke, Pennsylvania, 1911. The DL and W Railroad builds 20 duplex homes for high-level employees of its Truesdale Colliery Coal Mine. The settlement was designed in the international style of the day, but only employees who spoke English as their first language were eligible for residence. The project's designers dubbed it the Community of the Future and the Garden City of the Anthracite region. Why? The homes, each poured in a single day, were constructed entirely of concrete, a sexy new building technique at the time, originally patented by celebrated inventor Thomas Alva Edison in the hopes of solving urban housing shortages. Encircled by the boxy homes of Concrete City were a swimming pool, a baseball diamond, tennis courts, a small pavilion, and an electrically lit sidewalk. Annual garden contests were held to promote beautification of the unconventional community. Overflowing planters and lush, verdant vines adorned the sides of the homes. One year's winning competitor went so far as to have palm trees brought up from Georgia. They didn't thrive in the hostile winters of northern Pennsylvania, but lasted long enough to collect the top prize. Two years after its construction, the community gained a two-story schoolhouse of red brick built to house 300 students. Sometimes called the Betsy Ross School, its crown jewel was an underground model of a mine, dubbed the Truesdale Junior. It provided students with a hands-on education regarding their parents' livelihoods. Unfortunately, when the first winter hit, the concrete city's residents discovered that their homes were far too wet and drafty to be comfortable. Edison, hoping to salvage his vision, donated early prototypes of his electric dehumidifier, though these did little to solve the root problem of the moisture. The city's inhabitants tried to stick it out, but in 1924, the future ended when the township demanded the company install a sewer system. Owing to the concrete construction, this would have been exorbitantly expensive and the site was abandoned. Demolition attempts were similarly abandoned after 100 sticks of dynamite and a small impromptu aerial bombing failed to significantly damage even one of the homes. In 1978, a small group of local communists tried to move into the long-abandoned concrete city. They found the duplexes no more hospitable, however, and made their home instead in the school for about three months before being discovered and ousted for trespassing. Come 1979, and fearing another group might try the same, the county government tore down the red brick schoolhouse. Recognizing its usefulness and wanting to prevent further squatting, the local government took control of the property and used it for the training of firefighters, police, and the military, as evidenced by the ballistic impacts peppering the walls of some homes. In the summer of 1982, world-famous musicians John Hall and Daryl Lotz shot the music video for their hit single, Man Eater, in the concrete city which the musicians considered an important piece of heritage in their home state. In the latter half of the decade, following the lead of Hall and Oates, the Pennsylvania Historic and Museum Commission declared the concrete city an historical site. Today, though the homes refuse to fall, no trace of the community's other amenities presents itself without serious investigation. Edison's City of the Future now serves as little more than a canvas, coated in the paint of local artists and miscreants whether sprayed from a can or fired from a gun.